In two words, the Chateau Thierry American Monument is a reflection of unity and history. It is especially important to remember our history so we can learn from it and not repeat the same errors. However, it is equally as important to remember what unites all people. Chateau Thierry is an amalgamation of these concepts, being a combination of French and American efforts during World War I. What makes this monument so special, you may ask? Well, take a moment and reflect on your knowledge of World War I. Now do the same with World War II. And lastly, with the Statue of Liberty. Now, if I asked you to name one fact about the Chateau Thierry American Monument, would you be able to? Many people would likely not be able to, which emphasizes the importance of shedding light on a monument that doesn't condemn evil, but celebrates humanity. Often you hear, history is written by the victors, and while that could be the case with the Chateau Thierry, the history is not about flaunting power, but showing harmony. While much is known about the World Wars and the Statue of Liberty, this act of French and American unity often flies under the radar. But what makes this monument so special, and why was it built? In our opinion, the amount of carefully chosen symbolism makes the Chateau Thierry American Monument really shine. To others, it may be the location of the monument, or the stunning architecture, or perhaps other factors. These are some of the topics that you'll be presented with shortly. But let's start with a bit of background information on what led to France and the United States of America joining forces in the first place. As it is commonly taught in history books, World War I took place in 1914 to 1918, but we already assume that you know the main causes of why this worldwide conflict took place, so we will not further go into this matter. They were fought by Germany and countries who were allies with France and Britain. During this battle, the Germans advanced. Allies of France took it upon themselves to try and divide the German forces by attacking from either side. The Germans then withdrew back from this battle. The building of the Chateau Thierry Monument. This World War I monument was dedicated in 1937 and its construction was organized by the American Battle Monuments Commission. It was designed by Paul Crutt. It is built on land offered by France to the United States of America, where the Americans finally gained control of the hill after the offensive in July 1918. The main symbols on the edifice. On the west side of the monument, there are large statues of women holding hands, which symbolize the friendship between France and America. On the east side is an American eagle with the inscription, time will not dim the glory of their deeds. Under this inscription is a map of the region showing the progress of the American allied forces during the Ain Marne battle. On the ground, you will see an orientation table that indicates the directions and distances of historical points of interest. This monument overall commemorates the sacrifices and achievements of the Americans and French and holds an important part of American and French history. Not only that, but it comes to show you how both successfully fought the Germans during the Second Battle of the Marne in 1918 and came together. That's why this monument symbolizes the friendship and achievements of France and America. Our monument is located in France, and more precisely in the part that we call Eau de France. It resides in the department of Aisne and in the municipality of Chateau Thierry. The memorial is situated upon Hill du Haut-Fort and commands a wide view of the valley of the Marne River. Chateau Thierry American Monument is also located about 54 miles from Paris. A fun fact that we have discovered during our research is that the famous French poet Jean de La Fontaine also originated from Chateau Thierry. So being a relatively small town, the city of Chateau Thierry still holds important historical and cultural artifacts. French students were able to describe how the Hauts de France was compared to big capital cities. 
There, nature is predominant. Forests, natural parks, and reserves are the biggest tourist attractions. When tourists come to visit the American Chateau Thierry Monument, there is a French word that is frequently mentioned, which is des paysans. In English, we would say a change of scenery. In a way, we understand what these people feel. The atmosphere of the monument is peaceful and quiet, contrary to the loud noises coming from the busy cars in the city of Paris that can disrupt your contemplation of historic buildings. Here are some interesting comments that we have found on TripAdvisor. An underrated tourist attraction. When foreign tourists come to France, they tend to only go to the most visited places. To provide you some statistics about this tendency, we use the booklet called Tourism in Paris, which provides key numbers about tourist frequentation in the city. Within its booklet, we have found a pertinent table that illustrates the top 10 greater Paris cultural venues during the years 2017 up to 2018. You must have recognized these famous names such as the Eiffel Tower, the Louvre Museum, and Notre Dame. The top 10 are all famous places which confirm our hypothesis that tourists mainly go to famous monuments. However, we wanted to test this assertion ourselves, so we decided to come out with a little survey that we share to both our friends and American classmates to test if the popularity of a monument is a factor that would motivate people to go see it. We also asked them this question. Which statement do you relate the most when you visit a monument of tourist attraction? The answer went like that. 9.1% of students responded that small monuments are less interesting to them. And 27.3% stated that they only go to famous monuments because they are well known. However, we were re relieved to see that 637 didn't take into account the popularity of a monument in their crit criteria. Another question was us simply putting a picture of the Chateau Thierry American Monument and asking if they know the edifice without mentioning its name. As expected, the results were the following. 50% of the students didn't know what the monument was and had never seen it, while 30% of them didn't know it but had already seen it through pictures. What we can conclude is that our monument is quite underrated to foreign students but also to French students, even though it comes from their home country. We are aware that Chateau Thierry American Monument is quite remote from big cities, so it's harder to access it if you plan a trip to France. However, many people from the world still come to see it even if there is less data about it compared to tourism statistics in the capital. We were able to see that not through numbers but through feedback on TripAdvisor and Google. In fact, many people from different countries such as Russia, Portugal, the Netherlands, and even Spanish left altogether positive review on the comments. Having an American monument is no exception in France. In fact, American military monuments and cemeteries can be found in dozens of countries around the world. Nowhere is this more true than in France, which thanks to the two world wars has almost as many American monuments as all other countries outside of the US combined. The American Battle Monuments Commission, who was responsible for establishing the Chateau Thierry American Monument, maintains over 2,000 cemeteries and monuments in France, most of which are related to the First World War. The Second World War is also well represented, especially in the area around the Mardi, where you can find memorials of the Battle of D-Day, which is arguably America's best-remembered overseas military engagement. 
War memorials are undoubtedly predominant in France, but what makes them so important to populations? First, we can say that they act as historical touchstones in a way they link the past to the present and enable people to remember and respect the sacrifices of those who died, fought, participated or were affected by the conflicts. Memorials can also be an important source of information for young people in understanding the sacrifices that were made by past generations. Through our survey, this question was asked to our classmates, and the majority of them agreed with the fact that younger generations are more aware of the past through monuments. In addition to that, since the Chateau Thierry American monument is situated in France, we can imagine that local memorials can contain the names of families that are still living within the communities and who can offer a deeper insight into the history of the area. The relevance of war memorials in newer generations is another aspect that we are trying to analyze. Monuments are standing still in time, but new memories are made every day. In our survey, one question was addressed to this topic. We ask our classmates if war memorials are still relevant to our generations. 41% of them said no, while 33% of them stated yes. So it seems that younger people are less concerned by keeping memory of these worldwide conflicts alive as opposed to older generation. This hypothesis is proved yet again by 60% of our classmates who said that war memorials were not necessary since schools already provide history lessons where these conflicts are taught. The Chateau Thierry American Monument is not the only monument related to World War I in France. In fact, it is similar to another French monument that also commemorates American memory and that we have found relevant since it bears the same characteristics and the same architecture style as our own. So it is the Munsek American Monument that is also listed by the American Battle Monuments Commission. The edifice is located on the hill of Monsec in the town of Thiocourt in France. By roaring the way, the Chateau Thierry American Monument is dominating the landscape around its perimeter. At the French Initiative, the Monsec Monument commemorates the achievements of the American soldiers who fought in this region in 1917 and 1918. It also honors combat services of other U.S. divisions in this region and in Alsace and Lorraine. Another tourist attraction that is worth mentioning is also an American monument called the Liberty in Distress that was commissioned by a group of influential citizens of New York to honor those who died in the first battle of the Marne, which is uh, the same conflict that was remembered through our monument. This time it was an American gift to the French people in exchange for the Statue of Liberty. So it is located in Moore, in Seine-et-Marne, and the architect was American neoclassist Thomas Hastings. Through these monuments, we can say that our two countries, France and the US, have maintained a long-lasting friendship throughout the past. This relationship seems to have mostly taken the form of gifting commodities by honoring each other's act of bravery and sacrifices. A warm memory that is fading away, countries are more connected than ever. Nowadays, we can not only exchange goods and services, but also culture. Therefore, thinking about relations between countries shows a lot of what remains from past events and what is being built for the future. In that way, we can look at our monuments as a fragment of the past that physically connects the United States and France. Although, does this imply that, in this case, both countries are still sharing the same perspective about war? About the consequences of devastation? Does some of the historical comradeship remain in people's minds? In 1920, Chateau Thierry received the Légion d'honneur, the highest French order of merit, and the Croix de Guerre, a military distinction in honor of the soldiers. The centenary of those attributions was recently celebrated in 2020 with the presence of the French president, 
as well as the American Battle Monuments Commission representatives. In all the glory of French tradition in terms of honoring the past and being proud about what was achieved by your predecessors at the cost of their lives, this ceremony reveals a will to respect common history and common patrimony. However, there is still a fear of forgetting. In an article dedicated to the monument in the New York Times, an owner of a local restaurant near the site said that with time, people forget. We no longer have a World War I soldier who is alive. Where once was a battlefield, now there is a bucolic green field. Children run and play through places where it seems that even the land has no longer memories of death and war. Somehow, nature is giving an example of reconstruction, a metaphor to the bonds that have been created in tough times and are now the foundations of a brighter future between our two countries. So now we are going to wonder how this monument is representative of France and America's friendship. So what is interesting about this monument is that it was the American authorities who decided to build it in France and decided then to offer this monument to the French as a sign of friendship. And uh, this monument is located on land donated by France to the United States on the very spot where the Americans finally took control of the hill 204 uh, after the offensive of July 1918, which caused many victims in the American side. So, moreover, the architect who designed it, uh, Paul Crete, were a Franco-American. So, we can say that even in the way this monument was built, uh, the Americans, so the Americans and the French together, uh, we can say that it's a reflection of the friendship and cohesion between France and the United States. So, about this monument itself, uh, we can see that there, there are large statues who represent uh, two women being the metaphor of the United States at the east side and France at the west side holding hands to show the cohesion that was there during this battle and the strong friendship between them. So with these statues, uh, France here is represented by wearing breastplates and shields to represent the resistance of the French and, and the United States is shown uh, carrying a sword in order to show the strength and the courage that they had uh, during this battle, but also during the old war. So even though this monument represents the unity and cooperation between the US and France, it doesn't have the same meaning to the French and the Americans. In fact, for the French, it's a way to remember the precious help brought by, by the Americans, represented for example uh, by the big statues holding hands and the map which traces the progression of the American soldiers. But for the Americans, it's also a symbol of unity with the French, of course, but it's especially a means to pay, to pay tribute to the men who died during these battles, which were very consequent and represented by the eagle with the quote, Time will not dim the glory of their deeds. So now, let's focus on how this monument managed to incorporate both French and American culture. So first, this monument doesn't have too many cultural aspects, as it is a Macomer commemorative monument in order to remember a hi historical moment but we can see at the center of the monument a huge eagle that we can make a direct reference to American culture as the eagle is the emblem of the United States. Uh, indeed we can say that this symbol represents freedom, strength, long life and the majestic aspects of the United States and this is exactly what this monument tries to show by showing this eagle dominating the coast 204 and by trying to show the strength and the greatness of the United, of the United States. 
So also we can make a direct comparison between the eagle on the monument and the seal of the United States. So we can see on both 13 stars which represent the 13 original colonies also represented on the seal by the 13 olives, 13 arrows and the 13 stripes of the coat of arms. And finally, this monument also represent French culture by highlighting the resistance on France. Uh, we can say that the French are known to be resistant and revolutionary throughout their history before and after the First World War. In conclusion to this documentary, The Chateau Theory American Monument, it is a great example of the friendship between France and American culture. We see all of the aspects pertaining to battle, friendship, alliance, and most and the most important thing of all, history. The history of this monument is so grand and special because it really gives a meaning to the culture. Going back to World War I and the way France and America came together, it showed an allied friendship. The purpose of this project was to give more light to this monument and to show how its presence is so important to history.